All right, YouTube, let's hope we can finish it on this battery, or on this recording time, rather. All right, so we've got it in there, uh, the canopy back in. Uh, we've got a little plastic piece designed to help make the transition to the prop. You can tell everything's nice and solid. Um, we should be able to get the motor out when we get our new motor in. And uh, the only thing I just missed as the memory was cutting out is that I was trimming this because I wanted to make it flush. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to reevaluate that real quick and we're going to look at how it looks. We're going to decide if we want to take any more off. And I would say, honestly, we probably don't have to, but I, I would like to have a little bit more off of there so that it's even on both sides. Um, but just bearing in mind that this plastic, the way it's put together, you know, you'll eventually get to the point where they're going to want to separate. So I'm just going to be really sparing on how much I take off. Okay, so we're just going to get that side. Now we're going to go over to the other side. These are these are good Fiskars titanium scissors. Um, they're not overly expensive, but they're just good. I, I take care of them. And I try to keep the glue and stuff off the tips. And that's probably the number one thing I do to keep these things nice and sharp. I just clean them once in a while. Okay, so that looks nice and square. So now let's compare it when it's actually on the aircraft. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. I can live with that. Now we've got this nice smooth transition, but we still have room for a little bit of air to get back there and help cooling that motor. And that thing looks pretty. Boy, if that was a clear prop, that would be really good. Um, I'm a little concerned that under the right conditions this prop could come along, but I don't think it's going to hit, see, because as it goes around the plane, it never the leading edge never hits that edge. I don't want it to pop the canopy off. Um, the other thing I'm noticing is that this prop, or the uh, spinner rather, if I could just get that spinner to sit back just a little teeny tiny teeny tiny bit further, I think it would help to obscure and hide everything a little bit better. I'm going to try it, but only because I have three of them. So I'm just going to take my very sharp, fairly new X-Acto knife. I'm going to run it parallel to this both sides. I'm going to run it just barely, barely taking any material out. And then I'm just going to look at both sides and see when it's even. Cutting at the same time so that I make sure that the depth of the cut's the same. And now I'm going to take and I'm going to heat up this tip. This solder, um, I'm just doing it like I always do where I use my torch to heat it up and I could ruin this really quick here so I'm just gonna be careful okay I don't have it hot enough to do what I was hoping to do I think I'm gonna try this one more time I'm gonna take the knife and I'm gonna try to plunge cut okay that time I got the plunge cut I was looking for Sometimes when you don't get the cut you're wanting, it's better to just back off of the cut and try a different method. Especially when you're getting down to the fine details like this. Okay, so now the last little bit that I need to take out is in the middle. And even though it's still critical for placement and everything, it's not quite as critical. So I can just, I can just do that. Okay, perfect. Oh, please fit and look awesome like it did before. You know, it didn't probably make a real big improvement, but I think we're okay. Then the other thing I'm noticing is as this spins, I feel like I'm maybe hitting a little bit of my cotton. Maybe I am. So I'm going to actually pull this canopy off. I'm just going to look in here. It looks like I'm, I'm getting close here. I'm just going to trim this, this back a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit. And remember, this is pretty sturdy stuff, so you can actually cut it pretty safe. It's not like foam. 
Maybe that was some glue. That might have been what it was, just a little glue. Yeah, we're good now. Those are the details that make the difference. Those are the details that get overlooked at the factory. Obviously, in this case, this isn't a factory thing, so we can't blame the factory for this if it sucks. And, um, which I would never do that. Okay. Oh, it's going to go. It's going to go this way. That looks pretty stinking good, guys. It's a good transition. It's a good size. Now, I think we just, we probably got to bite the bullet. We got to go ahead and glue this. And so the way I want to glue this is I want to use CA. Now, why CA, you say? Because you could use pops in your hand, not in your mouth. Well, that stuff, it's, um, it's really hard to get an even application. And also, it's, um, it's, it's, very, it's very thick, and so I'm going to have a hard time getting control of it. So what I'm going to do is I'll use my gap filling, the medium CA. I'm going to apply it to this thing, and then I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to wipe it just in two spots and two spots. I'm going to drop it quick, drop it like it's hot, then I'm going to stick this on. And I'm going to just hold it for a second. I'm not going to put any kicker on there at all. I'm just going to hold it for a second. And once we've held it for a second, we should have pretty good adhesion at this point. But we're just going to let it sit for a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to pause it and we'll clean up. And if I think of anything, we can get it in this last video. Okay, as expected, I thought of something that we hadn't addressed yet. And that is, um, inside this canopy, there's a spot where I had my uh, battery wire was secured to the side of the fuse so that it would protect from strain that would be applied to this wire. Now the other thing is this thing, I, I removed that from being attached to the side of the wall while I was at the hobby shop because while I was at the hobby shop I tried to get into another motor I tried to fit another motor in there and I was unsuccessful. So I've got the same method, a little bit of hot glue, because remember we want it to be somewhat removable in this case. I'm gonna apply it to the wire and then I'm gonna stick it to the side, lick my finger and I'm gonna push it into the side and hold it until it cools totally. Because the styrofoam will hold that heat. Next thing you know, it's got a hole in the side. Of course, I don't have it that hot because I've allowed it to cool. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side but this other side is actually going to be tucked up a little bit further. So I'm going to get this other side wet so I can do the same thing but that I couldn't do with my finger. Okay, so we're just going to roll this and then we're going to stick it down. And I just got glue onto that gear. Son of a gun. If that happens to you, don't fret. We'll be able to get it fixed. But for now, do your best to get the glue joint taken care of and then we're going to come back to it. I got a little bit of glue on those two gears. This is hot glue. That's part of the reason why hot glue is so nice. Um, it's not going to stick on there like CA would. So it's not as big a deal. But the strings from hot glue can be atrocious to deal with. Um, and anybody who's worked with hot glue knows exactly what I'm talking about. And boy, I got that hot glue literally between the two. But it's already off. Can't even tell it was on there. That's awesome. Okay, now one more application of hot glue to the white and black wire, and I think we're gonna be golden. Okay, so this is gonna go on top of my existing um, little glue joint that I've got here. And this is going to help clean it up a little bit. Son of a gun, I was afraid that would happen. And that didn't work the way I'd hoped, but it's okay. Because we have as many tries as it takes as long as we don't screw something up which we're bound to do if we keep trying this. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to peel this stuff off. All right guys, I got that, I got that battery line hooked up to the wall now. And then here in a few hours when this glue is totally dry, I can take that tape off or I'll just leave that tape. It doesn't really hurt anything. And it feels like the nose cone is solid. So really at this point, it's just time to take a look at it, see if we like the way it looks. I like the way it looks. 
but I am uh, obviously going to be a little bit partial to this since I was the one who did it. I know that some other people have done this, and they've done a really nice job, and they've put on, I think it's Gribner uh, props, and just beautiful installations. Um, the only other thing I can say is that she CGs out without a battery on the factory CG points. So what might happen is if I have any issues, then I may end up putting the battery back here and doing an extension cord, which I do have some extension cords. Um, and I'll show you what they look like and I'll give you the part number right quick before we shut this video off. Um, they're purchased at Hobby King and they're a 1S male to a 1S female. And here it is. Mini JST EXT5 9727 and that's what they look like. So you basically, and you got, you always got to take hot glue and dab it or CA and dab it on the female end or they'll just rip right out. That's actually the only time I've ever been burned playing with radio controlled airplanes was on a 1S battery. Ripped it out, shorted the lead, burned my finger pretty good. Threw the thing in the sink, it had reacted so quickly that the terminals actually uh, caked over with like uh, corrosion. So it saved the battery, I couldn't believe it. So yeah, that's basically what you got there. And uh, that's what I used to extend this motor line. But if you wanted to move this battery to the back, you could take and plug this thing in here. And then you could run this back however you see fit. And you could actually put your little 1S battery back here. Um, whether that's a 300 milliamp hour or a 1 100 or a 70 or a 370 I could care less what you use my guess is I'm probably going to end up flying this predominantly on 150 milliamp hour uh, batteries but I don't know that for a fact yet and uh, you know just your factory style here or like a nanotech nanotech sells a bunch of these are super dirt cheap they're like I don't know they're usually like a buck at Hobby King as opposed to these I think they try to take you for about six bucks on these things um but anyway guys keep watching we're gonna have a flight video posted in no time and when i say no time i'm gonna be flying this in just a few quick seconds and then as far as i'm concerned you guys will be watching a few quick seconds after that but uh that depends on if my filming crew agrees with me so i'm gonna go ask her if she's ready Thanks for watching.